So hey, welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. It is my favorite time of the year. It's rising season. So if you've tuned out from all of the Zen 3, Ryzen 5000 uh, news and rumors, then this is the video for you. We're gonna run through some of the news and rumors, some of the things that we kind of know about Ryzen 5000 CPUs and what we think we might know. So first and foremost, if you've been out of the loop with Ryzen news in the last few months, then you may have missed that it looks like we're getting Ryzen 5000 CPUs instead of Ryzen 4000 CPUs, and that's based on the recent leak of an Ashes of the Singularity benchmark run by a uh, supposedly 5800X. Now, I hope what's going on here is basically just some marketing for AMD to clean up its naming scheme because if you recall going clear back to the first generation Ryzen CPUs, the naming scheme has been kind of confusing on the Ryzen front. Most notably, going clear back to those early generations, we had the first gen Ryzen 1000 CPUs, but then we had Zen CPUs with 2000 naming SKUs, and that would of course be the APUs, the 2200G and the 2400G were both labeled as the 2000 series, but they were still on the original Zen architecture. So hopefully what AMD is basically doing here is putting all these Zen 3 CPUs, whether they're an APU or not, into that 5000 naming scheme, and then they can continue to progress to the 6000 series with future architectures and keep all of the Zen 3 parts in just the 5000 range. Fingers crossed that's what's going on here. AMD is going with an October 8th, what supposedly will be an announcement of not just the Zen 3 architecture and CPUs, but also likely our DNA too. Now, according to PCGamer.com, uh, AMD is gonna be using TSMC's seven nanometer enhanced node, which should give either uh, better performance, better power efficiency, or a little bit of both, depending on how AMD configures its different CPUs. So this is a little bit of a change. It's it's not obviously a big drop down in the node size here, but we do get a slightly newer node. And with that, it looks like AMD CPUs are gonna benefit not just on a performance or on a uh, power efficiency front, but depending on how AMD is configuring these CPUs, there should be a benefit to both available. So this should actually benefit both mobile chips as well as desktop chips and not one or the other, which to be honest with a brand new architecture is exactly what we would expect. Now, as far as pricing goes, I don't know that we should really be expecting a big change between the Zen 2 CPUs of the Ryzen 3000 series and the Zen 3 CPUs of the Ryzen 5000 series. I think AMD already brings a really great value to the uh, enthusiast market as well as really just the uh, PC integrator market as well. So I don't think we're gonna see a big change in the original MSRP pricing. I think AMD, because they're still trailing in market share overall, is probably still gonna be trying to cut or rather undercut Intel in the pricing a little bit. So I would expect very similar pricing core for core that we saw with the original Ryzen 3000 MSRPs, though I have not seen leaks and rumors that really uh, confirm that or that sort of go against that. So we're probably gonna have to wait and see until October 8th to see actual pricing. But if I were you and you were looking at upgrading a Ryzen 3000 eight core, then you're probably gonna spend about the same amount of money if you bought that Ryzen 3000 series when it first launched. Now, as far as SKUs that will be available at launch, it looks like like if Yuri Bubbly, at least I think that's how you pronounce Yuri Bubbly, I, I don't actually know how to pronounce it, but uh, he's an AMD enthusiast and has actually made some tools specific to AMD. If his tweet is correct, then we're looking at the 5800X and the 5900X being launched on October 20th, and that would be the first launch day for these Ryzen 5000 series CPUs. Of course, the 5800X would likely be eight cores, 16 threads replacing the 3800X, and the 5900X would replace the 3900X at 12 cores and 24 threads. Now, that would also leave room then, at least presumably, for the 5950X to come along a little bit later, similar to the way the 3950X came a little bit after the 3900X. So the 5950X would likely be, again, 16 cores and 32 threads. And again, I expect it to 
be priced very similar to the 3000 series was at launch. So if we're talking about the 5950X, probably in that $750 range, and the 5900X, probably in that $500 range, at least at launch. It's also worth noting that our DNA 2 looks like it's probably targeting more a November launch, at least again, if that tweet is accurate. So if you're looking more forward to AMD's GPUs, you may have a little bit longer to wait, but I expect AMD is really antsy to get those announced because uh, the longer they wait to announce the RDNA 2 chips, the longer Nvidia has to catch up on supply with their uh, RTX 3000 series. And I think a lot of people are really chomping at the bit to get their hands on one of those. So I think AMD is probably very antsy to at least get their RDNA 2 chips announced. So people kind of have a, an exact date at least to look forward to those benchmarks hitting the open market so that you can actually make a more informed decision between RTX 3000 and RDNA 2. So November looks to be the uh, actual launch date for RDNA 2. And that makes sense because that's right around the same time the consoles are gonna be hitting the market as well. And finally, going back to PC Gamer, it looks like performance right now is on target to hit that 10 to 15% gains over Zen 2 range, which is again, with a new architecture, that's kind of the range that you would expect with a CPU launch, though there are some that believe we could see gains as much as 20%. Though, once again, with any type of architecture change, it's gonna vary based on workload. So it's gonna be impossible for us to really tell what kind of gains we're getting with the Zen 3 architecture until we actually see some benchmarks where we can compare apples to apples between various CPUs, which of course on October 8th, AMD will likely give us at least some of their own benchmarks. Though, again, you'll have to wait until reviews go along live for those to actually be confirmed or denied by reviewers, but 10 to 15%, pretty standard fare for a brand new CPU architecture. That looks like what most rumors and leaks seem to be targeting as well. So if you're trying to bank on what gains could look like, pretty standard fare, 10 to 15% IPC, which to be fair is still gonna result in a really, really good gain for these Zen 3 CPUs. So right now that is the news and rumors surrounding the Ryzen 5000 CPUs based on the Zen 3 architecture. As we get closer to launch day, I'm sure we're gonna start to see a lot more of these sort of leaks and rumors cropping up. And then of course on October 8th, we're likely to get a ton of specific details from AMD. But regardless, we are now in October, so you won't have to wait all that much longer if you're excited about these CPUs, especially maybe if you're somebody that was on the original uh, Zen 1 or Zen Plus or even Zen 2 architectures, uh, you may be looking for an upgrade, especially on those first two generations of Zen architecture. You could be looking at a pretty big upgrade. And if you're on a 400 series motherboard, a B450 or an X470, you may even actually have an upgrade path without getting a new motherboard. But if you're on an even older motherboard like B350 or X370, you may have to jump through the hoop of getting a new motherboard. There is some concern out there that X570 motherboards or B550 motherboards might end up being in quite short supply once these Ryzen processors on the Zen 3 architecture actually launch. So if you know that you're gonna be upgrading to this new architecture, then if you find a good motherboard now, it may not be a bad idea to go ahead and purchase it, especially if you know that you can get the thing returned if it turns out those benchmarks are terrible. Maybe don't purchase them quite yet, but at the same time, if you absolutely know you're upgrading, then it might be time to buy a motherboard now just so you don't get left out in the cold with a CPU and no motherboard to put it into. But those are all the news and rumors that I'm currently aware of. Of course, if you're aware of something that I didn't mention, let us know in those comments down below. And of course, if you like this video and you wanna see more like it, give this video a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.